Colossians chapter 1, starting with verse 15. Who, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him. For He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. And He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell. Father, we thank You for the reading of Your Word. I've never preached it this way. There's going to be some challenging parts. Holy Spirit, let my tongue be as the pen of a ready writer. Let me get this out the way that you want it. We love you. We glorify you. We thank you for the kids that put on the program. We thank you for awesome worship. We thank you for the deliverances that were taking the place here in worship. And now we want to hear from you. We don't hear from me. We want to hear from you. So help me get this out. In the name of Jesus Christ and everybody said. Amen. We'll start with verse 15. We're going to break this down a little at a time. I'm going to do a lot of teaching in between some preaching. So I might just do a backflip and spit a little bit, but I also want to teach you as we go through this one too. Is that all right? Yes, Amen. Amen. Verse 15, I'm going to, I read out of the King James. I want to read out of the uh, today's English version also. Uh, the complete Jewish Bible and the NLT. The TEV says, Christ is the visible likeness of the invisible God. He is the firstborn Son, superior, superior to all created things. The complete Jewish Bible says He is the, he is the visible image of the invisible God. He is supreme over all creation. And in the NLT, it says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He consisted, he existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. And in the Amplified Version, it says, He is the sole expression of the glory of God. You'll know where I'm going here in a second. The light being the outraying or radiance of the divine. And He is the perfect imprint and the very image of God's nature, upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by His mighty word of power. When He had, by offering Himself, accomplished our cleansing of sins and riddance of guilt, He sat down at the right hand of the divine majesty on high. Now that was Hebrews 1.3. Forgot to add that in there. Hebrews 1.3. And in John 14.9, the Amplified says, Jesus replied, John 14.9 Amplified. Jesus replied, Have I been with all of you for so long a time and you do not recognize and know me yet, Philip? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say then show us the Father? See, it was not the physical realm that Jesus was the image of God, but the spiritual. See, His actions and His nature and His character. The book of Isaiah tells us, Isaiah 53, 2 in the NLT, it says, My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about His appearance. Nothing to attract us to Him. See, He is. He is the, invis he is the image of the invisible God. <laughs> but if you're just looking on the outside, you're going to miss it. Because he was a, I know we, we got these, if you turn my mic down just a little bit, because I'm going to get crunked up here in a second. I don't want to blast your eardrums. Thank you. But, because the scripture tells us that he was nothing really to behold. And, and Hollywood sometimes wants to paint this, well, he's a Caucasian with 
blue eyes and a strong chin and he just looks like a leader. That's not what my Bible says. First of all, he was Jewish. I don't know if he's black, brown, well, I don't know, okay? He was Jewish. And he was nothing to look at. In other words, he was not some Hollywood depicted something. You wouldn't even have recognized him if he walked across the streets. Looked like anybody else. So he was the, in, the image of the invisible God. And it was have, being around him that you knew that. That you knew there was some special, some, something about this one. We can't put the finger on it. There's something different about this one. Something different about this man. I could be in the presence of this man and I feel something shaking on the inside of me. I feel something moving on the inside of me. Something's loosened on the inside of me. I don't know who he is. I don't know where he comes from. There's something different about this man. And it's not because of the way he looked. That was the image of God. Jesus is the will of man from God for all men for all time. What's God's will for you, Jesus? Sent us. He is the image. He's the image of the invisible God. Image. Just like when God looked down and, 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 he, and he looked at Adam and said that he was created in his, you know, let's make man in our image. What does that image mean? Image is the same thing. What happens when you look in the mirror? Who do you see? See, when God looked down at Adam, he saw himself. Because we are created in the image of God. And we lost that, but guess who brought it back? It was not because Adam physically looked just like God. And Jesus was nothing to behold, but yet he was God in the flesh. And you couldn't be around God without something being different. Amen. And amen. Glory be to God. And it says he's also the firstborn of every creature. Now here's where I want to teach you for a second, okay? This, this is very important because you've got other sects of religion that want to change stuff about Jesus. You see, a lot of people will say, well... Well, let me just say it this way. Be careful when you're talking to others about Christianity, because Christianity is different than everything else. It all hinges around Jesus. Amen? Every religion, say, every religion says that theirs is the only way, theirs is the best, this and that and the other. But we, we have everything centered around Jesus. So if you want to know whether something is of God or not, first of all, it's got to come out of this Word. He never, his Spirit never contradicts contradicts the word and the word never contradicts the spirit and if you've got beware of somebody who come wrong and says we got further revelation and it's outside of this word and it's got something else attached to it because some religions will use this verse oh thank you holy spirit you see, you can use the same names and think everything is fine. We're using the same names. We're using the same phrases. It's all good. You might be using the same names, but do you have the same definitions? You can say Jesus is the Son of God, but define that. What does that mean? What is that to you? What does the Word say about it? Why are you saying all that, Pastor? Because you've got some religions that they'll say Jesus is the Son of God, but you got all you got to trace it back. Who is he? Who is he? And you trace it back and you get deeper with them. And what they say is that, well, he was a created being. And they're trying to tear down his divinity. And he was a created being. You've got other sects. Of, of, of religion that, that make Jesus a created being like an angel. You, you, you got Mormons saying that he was Lucifer's brother. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing those looks. Yeah, you need to, you need to, you need to research some stuff, people using these words on you. Jehovah's Witness will want to keep him as a created angel. 
Amen. I hope it's so quiet because you're shocked. But that's what happened. But you can use the same names, the same phrases. But you, and all centers around Jesus. Tell me more about Jesus. Well, Jesus is this. Well, now tell me about where did he come from? Tell me about, just, just keep getting deeper and deeper in Jesus. Then I'll know whether I can yoke up with you or not. Because if it doesn't, if it ain't in that word, I'm sorry. I love you, but. And what they say is, is this word here. They use the, the firstborn of every creature. This firstborn here, one of the words in Greek is prototesis. I probably messed that up. But it's, it's Greek for first created. That's a Greek word for first created, okay? But the Greek word for firstborn here is protokos. That's two different words. And protokos... In Jewish culture, this refers to position. This refers to preeminence or first in rank. Above all, superior or surpassing. In other words, he was his father's heir. And all that the father possessed was his. That's Hebrews 1, 2. It's not saying that he was first born as in he didn't exist, and all of a sudden, he was created. That's not the word that was used there. It was saying that he is the preeminence. Let me read that again in, in that one of the other translations. In the TEV, he is the firstborn son superior to all created things. The complete Jew, it says he is supreme over all creation. The NLT says was created... That he existed before anything was created and he is supreme all over, over creation. So it was basically saying the, the, the supreme or the preeminent, the preeminence of every creature. See this, I'm teaching you a little bit this morning. See, you got to know about Jesus. because Everything hinders around Jesus. See, when you start loosely using phrase and terminologies and you get definitions mixed up, all of a sudden you got problems. Let me ask you this. Has anybody ever had your Facebook hack? Do you, did it, well, you might have known somebody has. It's not really fun for somebody to get in touch with you and saying, have you lost your mind? You're like, what are you talking about? I can't believe you put all that out there. Like, well, I didn't put all that out there. What are you talking about? Well, on your Facebook page. Well, you know what? God doesn't like people coming in and changing His word and hacking His Facebook page either. Amen? So we got we to gotta make sure it's right. He is not a created being. We're going to prove, this, prove it out here in a minute anyways. That's what I'm saying. The title of the message, He's all that. He's always been. Jesus is not a created being. He's not an angelic being that sometime the God the Father just decided, Hey, I think I'll have a son today. He's been there for eternity past. And I'm going to jump more into that and challenge you more into that in just a minute. Verse 16, it says, For by Him were all things created. Amen. By Him. All things were created. Listen. That are in heaven and that are in earth. How in the world could you create heaven if you were created? Aided. The creation doesn't come before the creator. He is the supreme being. He's Jesus Christ, son of the living God. God in flesh who created all things. Yeah, but that heaven could be talking about, you know, because you got three heavens. You got the sky heaven. You got the solar system heavens. Then you got the heavens heavens. All right, we'll chew on this then. Because it says, and that are, that are in earth, uh, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and what? Like I said, I refuse to pastor a dead and dumb church. Don't be hooked on anything because it sounds familiar. You better check the source. 
And when it comes to Jesus, you better track it back about what they really say about Jesus. Because everything that we... Everything hinges on Jesus. If you get Jesus wrong, you've got it wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. All... It says all things were created by Him. Let me, let me finish that. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. Matter of fact, in Revelation, it, it tells us, Revelation chapter 4, it says that all things were created for His pleasure. We'll talk about Jesus. He created all things. And all means all. I was just telling somebody this a few weeks ago that, you know, I know a gentleman who did a word study. He researched all in the Hebrew. He reached it and researched it in the Greek. He did it in the Latin. Went back to the Chaldean. Even in the Aramaic. And you know what all really means? All. all. <laughs> all means all. Jesus is preeminent because he is creator. In the beginning, Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Word Elohim, it's plural. That word is plural. Just like a, a few verses then it said, let us make man. What do you mean us? Angels ain't going to be able to do nothing like that because only God can create. Jesus is God. Amen. Amen. Amen, I'll take that hand clap. Somebody knows it. Right. Jesus is God. He's not a created being. He's not somebody who just come on and put on flesh, but has, has a beginning. He has no beginning and he has no end. Amen. He is God. In the beginning, God, Elohim, plural. In the beginning. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was... The Word. Oh, I'm going to challenge you to the bone before this is over with. And I will take my time on this one. I can't have any mistakes on this one. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was Jesus is God. Well, explain the Trinity. I ain't that good yet. And nobody else is either. How in the world can three be one, but one be one, but yet three? I don't know. But they are. God is Father, Son, and Spirit. It's the wholeness, the unity, the, the trinity of it. It's amazing. Thank God he's, I praise him, and he's out of my head. If I could figure God out in my head totally, guess what? He ain't much of a God, is he? But yet he can still make it simplistic enough that he can break it down and say, faith is like the, a mustard seed and giving you some kind of example that you can understand. Yes. Even though his unsearchable riches, you can't take one piece of this scripture and ever exhaust it. It's a living word. But yet he can break it down so we can understand it. But yet when we dive into it, you can't really know the depths of the word. In John 10, 30, it says. John 10, 30. Y'all are participating today. I feel like preaching now. Jesus says, I and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2. Oh, I'm having fun with this. Amen. Philippians chapter 2 says, Who, being in the form of God, that's the exactness, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Because he was God. Amen. Amen. That word form in the Greek is morphe. Have you ever heard of metamorphosis, change or something like that? Well, this one's 
Morphe. And it means the nature or essence. He was the nature or essence of God. And thought it not to be robbery to be equal with God. But he made himself of no... He made himself of no reputation. In other words, that's why he looked plain. That's why you wouldn't know it was Jesus walking by just by the way he looks. Hey, glory be to He made himself of no re re reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. That's what he did for us. 1 Timothy 3.16 If you didn't like that, maybe you'll like some 1 Timothy. Oh, well, we got you some scriptures now. 1 Timothy 3.16 says... And without controversy. Well, when the Bible says without controversy, should we argue about it? No. This, ain't one, nah. this ain't one of them things like Paul says, all things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. All things are uh, lawful for me, but not all things profit. Amen? This ain't one of them. This is without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was... Manifested in the flesh. He was manifested in the flesh. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles. Believed on in the world. And received up into glory. If he was a created being. Then you know what? All the angels in heaven are in sin. Because it tells us in scripture. That all the angels are to worship him. Would God call any, 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 any of his angels to worship anything other than himself? And what does it say in Hebrews chapter 1? Oh boy, here I go. Here we go. In verse 13 it says, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Amen. In verse 5 of chapter 2 of Hebrews says, For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection to the world to come whereof we speak. Mm. Thank you, Lord. He is God Almighty. Verse 14 of chapter 1. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm, I'm slowing down just a little bit because these, these things are hit, they're bombarding me on the inside. And, and, and i got to know what to pick from. and mm, Others to save for a later date. Let's turn to verse 17. Go back to Colossians. Our main scripture. Yeah, I'm going to blow your minds here in a little bit. In verse 17, And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. That word before in the, the Greek pro means superior above all things. So it says, so basically a, a literal rendering of that would be, and he is above all things. <laughs> the word, well, you know, you don't have to argue the word. Somehow will just get in it. It'll, it'll state its own case. Amen. 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 You just got to get in it instead of taking somebody. That's why I say all the time. That's why I want to give you scripture reference, not scripture reference. Get in the book and look at it yourself. Don't blame, don't you dare believe something because somebody else told you to. You let the Holy Ghost quicken it to you. Even my spiritual fathers, I love them and I trust them enough that anything that they feed me I'll chew on, but I don't swallow anything until I got light on it. And just as soon as the Holy Spirit quickens to me, I'm responsible for it, amen? But I know it's true. Well, that sounds good. You got a scripture for that? Nah, sorry. 
Not interested in debate anymore. You had me for a minute. That sounded interesting. You ain't got no address on that one? Mm -mm. No. He's superior to all things. Listen, the creation is not greater than the creator. And a design does have a designer. And that word consists there, the Greek son, son is teo. I probably butchered that one too. But look, it means to set together. It means to be composed of. Not only is he God Almighty who created all things, but because of him all things consist. Amen. It says he upholds all things by the word of his power. In other words, he's the glue that holds it all together. Let's look at John 1, 3. Let's take some more trips into Scripture here. I'm just going to do it. Y'all still with me? Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 3. Hallelujah. If you're bored, say Amen. I've got one board in here. Okay. All right. Verse 3 says, All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. He is all that. Yes, He's all that. 1 Corinthians 8 I have to slip some stuff on that every now and then that you just see if you're paying attention. Amen. <laughs> Pay attention, Steve. First Corinthians chapter 8. <laughs> Amen. Just don't get James and Andrew started and we'll be all right. Oh, where was I at? First Corinthians 8, 6 says, But to us there is but... One God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. All things were by Jesus Christ. All, once again, all means? All. Oh, see, you're a scholar and you didn't even know it. <laughs> all means all. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. For some of y'all, it's feeling a little bit like Wednesday night, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Galatians chapter 3. Ephesians, excuse me. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9. Ephesians 3, 9. Scripture reads, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Christ. Go back to Hebrews chapter 1 again. Obviously, I wasn't done with that. Hebrews chapter 1, 1 through 3. God who at sundry or various times and in various manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all, all things by whom also he, the Son, made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. They're one and the same. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. All things continue to exist by him. They continue. Let's turn to Acts 17. I said this is more teaching. We do stuff like this more on Wednesday nights, but it just was in me for a Sunday morning. If you're visiting, usually I do a lot more preaching than teaching, but we got to lay line upon line on this. Too many people have too many things they say about Jesus. Acts 17, 28. It says, For in Him we live and move and have our being. In Jesus we live and move. Why? Because all things consist by Him. Why? Because He holds all things together by the words of His power. 
Hebrews 1, 3, we've been there already. Jesus, it all consists on Jesus. Turn back to Colossians again. Amen. You're flipping to so many scriptures. Yeah, that's what's called getting into the Word, isn't it? 118. And He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and all things He might have the preeminence. Here we go. This is going to get real good. The word head there, kephali in Greek, means supreme, chief, and prominent. Master, and it means Lord. I'm getting ready to, to share something with you quick that's going to be real deep. See, the church is a living organism. And as such, it has life with Jesus Christ being the head. Is your body not a living organism? Well, His body is too. Didn't he talk about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 all the different places in the body, people being this and being that? Every joint supplies, it says in Ephesians. The, his body is a living organism. This is not speaking Jesus as having a beginning like other creatures, verse 18 that we read here, okay? This is speaking of his resurrection. I'm getting ready to help you on some the theology here. See, he was the beginning of... Here we go. Jesus was the beginning of a whole new species of beings that has never existed before. You see, when he... It, the Bible said, we read it, that the Word was made what? So when flesh got put on, even the angel said, you need to call his name what? Jesus. You see, Jesus was his earthly and his eternal name, future. But he never was born and he never was created because he was God Almighty. But in the eternity past, he was not known as Jesus. He was known as Word. See, that's where some people get confused when they start talking about this stuff with Jesus. We ain't, a lot of times they'll say, well, he was a creator, this and that. And the other. No, you're talking about I, he put on flesh Jesus. You're not talking about the eternal word. Because he's always been. He's always been the word. Always existed with God because he was God. The Father, Son, and the Spirit, God. Always has been there. And he put on flesh and decided to call his name Jesus. But this is talking about his resurrection. This is what Paul was speaking of in 2 Corinthians 5.17. I can quote that. And he says that we are a brand new creation. And a, what, a brand new what? What a brand, brand new creation. Once again, you're looking on the outside. You ain't looking on the inside. You are brand new. Not just you're new in of yourself. You're a whole new creation. That before Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead, nobody like you existed. I told you I was going to challenge you today. You're a brand new creation. Why? Because we're the body of there never was a body of Christ until he... Woo! I'm preaching myself happy this morning. A brand new creation. When he resurrected from the dead, made a brand new creation. His church, the body of Christ. Galatians 6, 15. Galatians 6.15 reads, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Nobody ever existed like you before until Jesus raised from the dead. Hallelujah. But a new creature. His body. 
Lord, help me. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. See, that's where you can get confused about Jesus. You've got to know the timeline on stuff. Amen? Amen? Romans 6, 4 declares, Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in newness of life. See, once again, not newness as in, well, you know, it was old, but I guess, you know, here now. Yeah, new, newness, new. The, the new, new creation, new creature. Amen. I hope y'all are getting this. Like I said, if not, just chew on it for a while. It'll come around. See, Word is Jesus' eternal past name. We saw that in John 1.1. 1, 1. So the eternal name of Jesus was Word. Eternal past, never was the beginning. Sometimes men can kind of think of never ending. But I don't know about you, but I tried that one time and for about 15 minutes and I got a headache trying to think of really like never a beginning. Like, you know, and you keep rewinding, rewinding. It's like, no, there is no, you know, no beginning. It's like, ah, I can't handle this. Amen. But when the word, but, but when the word was made flesh, that's in John 1, 14. His eternal name was word. But when the Word was made flesh, that's John 1, 14. John 1, 14. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. It says His name was Jesus. See, Jesus was the firstborn of many brethren. Romans 8, 29. You're in, if you're in Romans, just slide over to the next chapter. And 8, 29. For whom He did foreknow, He also predestinated to be conformed unto the image of His Son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Because he was the firstborn of a new creation. No, oh, I don't think you get it. Let me say that a little bit slower. He was the firstborn. What do you mean firstborn? I thought you'd been spending the last few minutes telling he was eternal. He's God himself. He always existed. What do you mean he was the firstborn now? Because of what he did for you. He didn't just put on flesh and live a sinless life. He didn't just play with flesh. He said he was made sin. That means, yeah, but, you know, he was still God Almighty. Scripture says that he said, Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Because God cannot look on sin and when his son be... Listen, he didn't play with it. And Patty K. just didn't hold it. He became sin. That's first. That's Second Corinthians chapter 5, 21. Check it out. He became sin. Somebody can say, yeah, but not his spirit. That was just in his flesh. You know, he took, you better hope it was spirit because if that's the case, he did not redeem your spirit then. He took care of everything. Spirit, soul, and body became just like us so we could become just like him. And when God resurrected him from the dead, he was the first creation, a new creation. See, that's how awesome it is. Somebody's getting it. That how could God Almighty put on flesh and become sin and pretty much just, even though He existed, He just was so separated from the... See, that's why He sweat blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. It wasn't because He's going to have nails in His hands. How many valiant warriors from tribes and nations uh, from Jesus, even before Jesus, went out on the battlefield and died horrible deaths Screaming in a warrior's tone and even was strong to the death. And so he going to have a few nails and start crying? No. You see, it wasn't the physical part of it. He knew that he had to become what he could not even stand. He knew that he had to be separated from his father. He knew he had to go through, he had to go through it for us. To be separated from the father. Go into hell to take our punishment for us. Bear our sins, become us so we could become just like Him. See, He was the firstborn of many brethren. See, when you talk about Him being born, it was when He resurrected. It had nothing to do with eternity past. I am preaching my face off in here this morning. The eternity past word become flesh 
and decided to be just like us and to die for us and become sin and be separated from the Father totally, completely, to the point that when God raised him up, there's a new creation. The God-man. The resurrected Jesus. The glorified body. See, he wasn't walking through walls before he got resurrected. A new creation. Now, he still, when he was born, he, 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 he come to give back what Adam lost. In other words, he had all the authority. The wind and the waves, they knew his name. Why? Because they understood their creator. The wind and waves were like, that voice sounds familiar. Oh, that's our creator. And we must obey him. But then when he was raised as a new creation, the first of many brethren, the body, his church. Oh, yes. The title of the message is, he is all that. Where am I at? Amen. He was the firstborn of new creation. He was born of the flesh as the last Adam, that's 1 Corinthians 15, 45. Let's go there real quick. 1 Corinthians 15, 45. So it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, but the last Adam made a quickening spirit. But he was resurrected as the head of the church, a new kind. That's Ephesians chapter 1. And I'm going there. Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. The fullness of him. Did you, did you, did you don't just run over that. See, I'm, oh, uh, if you don't, if you don't know my heart, you might think I'm about ready to blaspheme, but all I'm doing is reading Scripture here. It says, His body is the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. Well, I'm not complete without Jesus. That's exactly right, but guess who's not complete without you? Amen. We're the fullness of Him because we are His body. Amen. told you I was going to challenge you today. This is usually not Sunday morning preaching, but I'm letting it fly. See, Jesus didn't just come back to life to have to, have to die again. See, there's other people that got resurrected. Lazarus got resurrected. We know Elijah, he laid on a child. They got resurrected. It's not like this was the first resurrection, but it was the first resurrection to never, be ne never, ever, ever be no more death. All the rest of them had to die again. So he was resurrected with a spiritual body that can never die. You're in first, are you in 1 Corinthians 15? No. Well, let's go there. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15. And in 44, it says, It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And then Romans chapter 6. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. Verse 9 says, Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. In verse 4 it says, Therefore we are, we read that earlier, buried with Christ in baptism. That like Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Amen. Let's go back to Colossians, and I'm thinking about ending. This is by design, if you're wondering. I don't want to be, we want to be known what we're for, not what we're against, but this is one of the reasons why I don't apologize for this. You're not just going to get some real quick, snappy, kind of fluffy stuff in, out, you feel better about yourself. We want to get you prepared for life.
because you'll walk out them doors, life is going to come. And these words hold the keys to life. And so, yes, you know, I'm not into the seeker friendly kind of just come and feel good and go and let, let you know, fill the seats and pay your tithes and then, you know, God bless you if you want to be a part of something. Amen. I told God from the beginning, I said, if this is ordained by you, and I said, you want this to happen, I said, I will follow you and whatever you want. He said, just like he told Peter, feed my sheep. Amen. 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 So in Colossians verse 19, as we... I'm thinking about wrapping up. It says, For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell. Amen. If you go to the second chapter of Colossians, chapter 9, if you're in chapter 1, just flip it over. It says, For in Him dwelleth all, all means what? All, all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So the sum total of everything that God is, is in Jesus. There's nothing missing. There's nothing lacking. There's not part D, C, and G. You know, Jesus is part A, B, and C, but He's not all the fullness of everything. Why am I even teaching that? Because how can you... See, we get excited and we want to do a two-step when you find out who you are in Him. But you can't really know who you are in Him until you find out who He is. Amen. Now I know we want to get excited when I could I could go to I could get everybody doing a dance and a jig out on the floor right now. We could have a cut time going. Pray for an organ. I want an organ player. Amen. I do. I really do. I can take you to Ephesians chapter two, talking about us being joint heirs with Christ. In other words, we already read that Jesus is an heir of God, so everything that God's is His. And then we are joint heirs. Joint means that it's the same. In other words, both of your names are on the account. We can get excited about that. But I want to, you to know who He is. Because this is the day that we celebrate His birth. And if all you think about is this little fluffy, fleshy, chubby little baby in a manger then you can't get real excited. But when you know that God became flesh and dwelt among us and exercised all authority on heaven and earth and that now for the first time ever because He loved us so much, there is flesh and bone sitting on the... There's a man sitting at the right hand of the majesty on high interceding for us and we're in Him. And there's none like Him. And He put on flesh and He died and was resurrected as a new creation so we could be in Him and we could be His children. So there's more than one God-man. He is the head, but we are His body. Don't tell me your toes ain't part of you. If you put in perspective, like I said, don't nobody come out here thinking I'm saying something that I ain't. He's the head, but we are His body. Amen. It's not trying to pull Him down. It's getting into the Word and realizing He's trying to pull us up. Amen. Come on up here and sit in the heavenly places with me. What I provided for you. Yes. It says we are kings and priests under our God. We are a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. We are a kind that has never been seen. That's why even the old prophets looked forward and was like, man, you know what? God's shown us some stuff. Man, I, they said they wished they could have been in these times. Praying in front of God, but it's all flesh. And every now and then the Holy Spirit would come upon the situation. And now we have the Holy Ghost abiding in us at all times. And this corruptible body will eventually just be put off. But the real you is in the image of the Almighty God. He who is joined to Christ is one spirit. And He done that for each and every one of us. Because dwell here in Colossians 1.19, dwell means a permanent habitation, to always abide in. To always abide in. When he says, for it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness always abide and always dwell. I 
could blow your mind even more, but I don't have the time. Let's go to John 17. That's the last scripture I've got. Some of you are like, oh no. And some of you are like, oh yeah. <laughs> it's all right. They are not going to run out of food. Besides, if you leave right now, you'll hit all the traffic and all the grumpy people. All the grumpy people. Let me just say this too, especially for all those that are watching out too. You know, when you go into a restaurant, let me just say this. Re waitresses and waitresses, one of the worst days for them is Sunday. Because people come from a church and they need God, but when you come in, you don't act like they're your server. You act like they're, that they're your servant. Don't do that. Tip them good. Love on them. Amen? Amen. John 17, 20. It says, neither pray, this is Jesus speaking, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall, shall, future tense, shall believe on me through their word. You didn't get here on your own. Somebody said something about Jesus. It says in the book of Romans, says, how will they hear without a preacher? And verse 21 says that they all may be what? One. As thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. <laughs> See, that's just, that stuff like that blows people's mind. Because you, can, you, you think about what you did in the past or what you did last night or something like that. And you fail to realize that if you're born again, it's your spirit man that got recreated. Yeah. And just, as, just like the Father and the Son are just like this, guess what? You and the Son are just like this. So that means you and the Father now are just like this. That they may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Here we go. Here's another mind blower. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have Given them. See, he didn't say go out witnessing. He says go out and be a witness. It says that when God created Adam, that he crowned him with his, in other words, he covered him. He clothed him with his what? His glory. And it says in the book of John that, that Jesus brought back the glory. And if we're in Christ Jesus, we're wearing the glory. We got the white robe. That's why he says that the glory that I have put on you, I'm going to put on them because I ain't even going to mess with that right now. The glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that thou may be one even as we are one. In verse 23, I and them and thou and me, as the music plays, I and them, and thou and me, that they may be perfect or complete, mature, in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and listen, and this is, this is why God sent his son, and hast loved them just like you've loved me. Stand to your feet. Why was this gift given? Because he loved you just as much as he loved Jesus. And he was willing to sacrifice and lose his son for a minute to be able to create a brand new creation that would be in Christ Jesus. So that you would never again ever be separated. See, death is not ceasing to exist. Nothing ever ceases to exist. Death is separation from life. For all those scholars out here, we're going to hit something real deep real quick. See, there's no such thing as darkness. There's just the absence of light. You can take light and take it to the infinite degree and still keep going. But when you get to a certain point in, in, in what they call darkness, and all it is is just we're gauging how less light we have. Darkness is not an entity in and of itself. It's just the absence of light. Example with cold. There's no such thing as cold. Cold is all we is, is just a term we use to measure the absence of heat. Because you can go so far on that scale, and what do they say? The 
I say, that's absolute zero or whatever. They, they, in other words, this is as far as you can go. It, it, it doesn't get any... But what are they saying? There's absolutely no heat now. That's as far as it goes. But with lasers and technology and everything, heat can go higher and higher. See, there's no such thing as cold. It's just the absence of heat. There's no such thing as darkness. It's the absence of light. There's real no such thing as death. It's just the absence of life. And see, once you understand that and you start reading some of these scriptures that you've stumbled on, it'll make sense to you. Amen. I'm not talking about ceasing to exist. And he loved you so much that he says, I'm willing to be separated from life. I'm willing to be chained by death. I'm willing to be everything that you are so that you can be just, listen, just like me. Now, he is the head. There you go. And now, come on, let's get that straight. He's King Jesus. Amen. But we are just like him. And it says when we will see him that we will know even as we are known. Once we behold him, 